furnace or boiler. The insatiable beast in the, burn in the basement is burning your whole world. So Heat Smart has a path you can walk with pleasure that includes wasting less energy and then replacing that ugly, smelly beast, the one with carbon monoxide on its breath and a conflagration in its belly, with super efficient electric heating and cooling systems in the form of heat pumps. They come in many flavors, so go to the Heat Smart shop. We've got a table right over here and get the scoop you want. Be healthier, be more comfortable, and be ready to use wind and solar to the utmost. That's your personal path towards a hopeful and prosperous future. You can enroll in the Heat Smart program at our table, or you can go home and do it online at solartompkins.org. Heatsmart also works with vetted installers, and they're all here today. So um, please go to their table, Snug Planet, Halco, NP Environmental, and uh, find out what they could do for your home to make it more sustainable. Go talk to them and get Heatsmart. Cooker from Go Solar Tompkins. Hi everybody, I'm Annalise. Thank you so much for coming out and taking action. Again, as Jonathan said, this is amazing that we've got this number of people out, but it is not enough. We need to continue this through our lives, see what we can do to make our homes and lives more efficient, and reclaim our power away from fossil fuels and towards renewables. Um, whether that's seeing the Heat Smart program or going to us at Solar Tompkins, uh, Go Solar Tompkins, excuse me. Go Solar Tompkins is um, a group of people from Cooperative Extension, like myself, and um, discounted solar prices to you. Um, we need to take action now, not next month, not next year. The climate will continue changing if we don't continue to do so. So let's take energy back into our own hands. Um, this Solar Tompkins, Go Solar Tompkins is picking up where the last Solar Tompkins le left off. Excuse me. Um, I see so many people out on such an important issue. Uh, my name is Jabron Haygood and I'm an energy educator at Cornell Cooperative uh, Extension. I'm Annalise, a colleague. I run a program called Energy Efficiency Appointments. Uh, what we try to do with that is actually go to your home, we walk through and we identify energy efficiency uh, DIY type of things that you can do. We bring products um, with us as well. Um, so I'm here just to be very supportive about the climate change. This is, this is our planet. If we don't take care of it, who that, who's going to do it for us? Um, it's not going to be, um, you know, the White House. I, at least not this administration. It doesn't look like, that's for sure. So uh, great job, everybody. You know, try to, you know, do you can, play your part, you know what I mean? And um, let's fight for some clean energy. Awesome. Thank you, Javon. Next up. Gay Nicholson from Sustainable Tompkins. All right, all right. So glad to see so many people here and prepared. Please heal. The county is doing some planning on that and working on where we're going to plug in and charge our electric vehicles, but there's a lot of great help you can get from Bike Walk Tompkins, Way to Go, Get Your Greenback Tompkins, car, Ithaca Car Share. There's a lot of help to uh, help. <laughs> well, it's kind of hard to control uh, the energy consumption when you're a tenant. But if we had a, uh, a minimum energy efficiency standard like Great Britain, then we could balance that out. And just think of how many jobs we'd be creating. Those are jobs that can't be outsourced but to insulate and air seal. Yeah, there really is a brave new world out there waiting for us to build it. We can get started on by taking action in our own lives by interacting with these great uh, exhibitors that we have here, these local energy firms that have these uh, group purchase low prices for you to take advantage of in the Heat Smart program and the Go Solar program. Also inside there are um, groups that are working on um, a carbon tax at the federal level and, and many other initiatives. I just hope that we will all take that message from earlier, seriously, about showing up and... I, something out of, out of, I, I've never been a politician before, I've been an activist, and we need to keep doing those things, and we need to do more. And I don't even know what all those things are, but we need to keep 
we need to figure out what they are and try things because we're in a crisis. So thank you for coming today, and we're going to end with a song. And please stay for the the uh, the the food and all the vendors. Thank you very much. Can I just say a few words? Uh, I'm from the frack fields of Pennsylvania, and we're suffering there. We, we, I'm, I'm, you can I'm have sorry. somebody who's an actual representative. Let me tell you how I proposed to him. No. We were. Uh, I mean, there's a couple. There's a couple of things. Um, one is, I mean, the point you made is exactly right. Uh, and what I want to do is, is I want us to reflect for a minute that that what 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 durable change does, of course, is it changes the baseline. It changes the baseline. So, uh, without revealing how old I am, right? Uh, uh, you know, Come on, Gerald. <laughs> You of all people. <laughs> um, I grew up in Southern California. Right? <laughs> and, and you're significantly younger than I, right? There, there are times when I would go, you know, as we all do, you get up, you go to the kitchen, and you get a glass of water, and you stare out the window. I grew up in a valley that was surrounded by eight to 11,000 foot mountains. And by the time I was in high school, there would be months when if I had if I brought somebody in there who had never been in there before and asked them whether there were mountains, they would not have bet on there being mountains. Because all you saw was a gray screen. Right? We're not going back to that. Right? What the Clean Air Act did was to clean was to clean that valley out. Right? There's still a bathtub ring, right, where the smog filled up the valley and filled all the pine trees up to a certain level, right? So if you, if you go into the valley that I grew up in, there's effectively a bathtub ring around the, 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 the valley. That eventually, those trees will eventually recover. But we're not going back to the days when you have a month or two months in a row when you can't see 300 yards. Like, we're not going back to that. We're not going back to the days when, when there were announcements that you, sh you shouldn't do any uh, outdoor exercise, but whether you had asthma or any kind of respiratory problems at all, right, that it was just unhealthy to do that. We're not going back to that, right? So that, what, we're, what we've done, right, is to change the baseline of what's acceptable, right? When I talked about the, the, the uh, de facto ERA, right, we're still in the, pro we're still in the process of work, working that one out, but we're, we're, we are not going back to the pre-ERA moment, right? We're not, right? And that's what I call durable change. Now, does it mean that we don't have fluctuations? Absolutely not. But what it means is changing the baseline so that, that you're right. Changing attitudes is exactly what social movements do, right? So what, what change, social movements create a vision of what is possible. 